Hey all you lot and welcome to another episode of News You Might Have Missed. I'm your host Tom Lord and on this show we look at a mighty mix of eclectic excerpts ranging from news outlets, blogs and tabloid rags based around the globe. On today's show we've got Evangelical pastor claims Jesus hasn't returned because people haven't donated enough cash Japanese police plead with public not to pet poisonous cat after cat fell in toxic chemicals and a Chinese airline has warned passengers not to throw coins into engines after an airbus is delayed by four hours. But first, Airbnb has banned cameras inside their rental properties. According to BBC News, Airbnb says it's introducing a worldwide ban the use of security cameras inside rental properties. Apparently Airbnb users have already voiced their concerns about the privacy and security of these indoor cameras. Yeah, obviously. The new rules though will still allow the use of doorbell cameras and noise monitors in common areas, but these devices also have to be disclosed on the properties listing page. Genuinely when I first read this I went, wait there was cameras. So it would appear that someone out there has a video of an overweight white guy sneaking cheese at 3 o'clock in the morning. Great. Evangelical pastor claims Jesus hasn't returned because people haven't donated enough cash. According to Lad Bible, the pastor told viewers if they donated more cash, they could speed up Jesus' return. This comes from evangelical pastor Jesse Duplantis, who was speaking during a four-day event called the Victory Thon. This comes at the same time he brags about being a multimillionaire and brags about having his own private plane. He also said he would hand the private jet over the day after the rapture. How are these tosspots getting away with essentially fraud? Maybe it's a biblical judgment that's in God's plan. If it is, I'm hoping for a bolt of lightning. Just at the exact moment, he says, Hallelujah. A Chinese man faked a kidnapping to try and pay off a Singaporean gambling debt. According to The Independent, a Chinese tourist is accused of trying to extort money from an aunt after raking up a massive gambling debt in Singapore. Liu Xiangjian, 33, staged his own kidnapping and tried to extort a ransom of 30,000 yuan. An investigation found that Mr. Liu had racked up a debt of 20 to 30,000 Singaporean dollars during his stay. It was after that when he sent messages to his aunt, pretending to be his own kidnapper. His aunt received a message from an unknown person, demanding a ransom for the release of Mr. Liu, and then forwarded the man's travel documents as proof. But then the police conducted an investigation where Mr. Liu was found safe and sound in the Bay Area just three hours after they were alerted. Mr. Liu has now been charged with attempted cheating and faces up to 10 years in jail or a fine if convicted. What a totally unfair thing to do to your own aunt. I think Deadbeat should pay the old fashioned way, with a gangster kneecapping and a permanent swim with concrete shoes. Two truck drivers in Rotterdam get stuck under the same bridge, blocking both directions of traffic. According to NOS, the two truck drivers got stuck at the same time today in the mass tunnel in Rotterdam. And one of the drivers said laughing, when I came out the mass tunnel, I already saw the other truck. The two trucks were only stuck for about 10 minutes or so, but according to Ridgemond, this is a place that trucks often get stuck. Councillor Simon Becker said, no one does it on purpose, but sometimes it's just not clearly indicated enough. The VVD though has said, they want some height bars before entering the tunnel, as things like this not only cause damage to motorists, but also bridges and viaducts. This story reminds me of the old saying, fool one truck, shame on you, fool two trucks, and perhaps your infrastructure doesn't have the required signage needed for the role at which it was designed for. A weird monolith has turned up in Wales for no apparent reason. According to The Guardian, Craig Murr, an amateur hiker, spotted the object while hiking the summit of a hill in the Powys Uplands. He said, When I first saw it, I was a bit taken aback as it looked like some sort of UFO. It seemed like some sort of very fine metallic material, almost like surgical steel and the steel structure was almost 10 foot long and looked perfectly leveled and steady, despite the weather being windy. This follows a spate of monoliths appearing in 2020, one in the Isle of Wight, one in Romania, and one in the Utah desert. Conspiracy theorists have said it could be aliens, but it could have just been taken by a group of people or dropped off by a helicopter. And as of yet, no one has come forward to claim responsibility for the Welsh monolith. Someone must really like confusing art to go to these sort of lengths. It's not my sort of art, but to be fair, my sort of art would be a nice geological map, a rude take on an overused phrase, or just the traditional dogs playing cards. A Saudi Arabian autonomous male robot 
has inappropriately touched a woman. According to Business Insider, a quote-unquote male humanoid robot was unveiled in Saudi Arabia. It then inappropriately touched a female reporter. Saudi robotics company QSS debuted Mohammed the humanoid robot last week at Deepfest in Riyadh. Apparently the robot, dressed in traditional Saudi attire, spoke Arabic and English. And in a Deepfest post, Mohammed was described as the first Saudi robot in the form of a man, as well as a national project to highlight Saudi Arabia's AI achievements. But during the presentation, a female reporter, Raria Qasim, stood in front of Mohammed as she spoke to the audience. It was then when the video shows that the robot extends a hand towards her backside. The reporter can then be seen responding with a stern glare to the robot. Great news then. Not only are artificial males coming, but similar to the real thing, they'll fill women up after a couple of batteries down the local charging spot with the lads. Progress. Japanese police are pleading with the public not to pet a poisonous cat after the cat fell in toxic chemicals. According to the BBC, the warning comes after a factory worker found yellow paw prints leading away from a container of poisonous chemicals. Security footage was then reviewed and the cat could be seen running away, leaving a trail of paw prints. It's thought that the cat fell in a vat of hexavalent chromium, a highly acidic and carcinogenic chemical with an orange and brown colour. Hexavalent chromium can cause skin irritation, respiratory problems and blindness. And staff have to wear masks and rubber gloves when working near the substance. And officials have said that as of Tuesday, there have been no reported sightings of the cat. Important notice then. If you see a very toxic pussy about town, do not pet it, do not touch it, and do not take it home, no matter how enticing. Dozens of Cameroon youth football players have been found to be overage, some as old as 31. According to RTL News, the Cameroon Football Association has temporarily suspended 62 players for not being honest about their ages. One player in particular said he was 17 when reality he was 31. The Cameroon Football Association on Sunday published a list of all the players who are no longer allowed to play for the rest of the season. And football club Yong Sports Academy from Bemenda found 13 players from which age irregularities have been discovered. Apparently the main cause of the situation is European clubs not wanting to sign players over the age of 23 from Africa. And football players are then lying about their age to give themselves opportunities to be discovered as talent. I suppose it's quite sad that they have to lie to get onto a team. Then again, I still lie about being 15 to get half on the bus, so who's the real villain here? A dog that's been missing for 10 years has been finally reunited with its owner. Clear the dog's family never gave up hope that they reunite with the cockapoo. And 10 years later, that determination led to a reunion. The family had lost their pup in 2014, when the curious cockapoo ran away from home. But despite never having seen her again, the family still continued to update her microchip, but all that determination finally paid off. After now 14-year-old Cleo arrived at the Humane Society of Tampa Bay. The HSTB said, we were hoping for a happy ending and for her to be reunited with her owners, but we did not foresee the joy that her story brought. Bobby! What a wonderful story and it just gives you hope, doesn't it? I had a dog that ran away from home once, left messages on a voicemail and everything. No reply. Both pilots on an Indonesian flight fell asleep for half an hour at the same time. During a domestic flight in Indonesia, both pilots fell asleep and the aircraft flew half an hour without being piloted. This incident happened on January 25th during a domestic flight to the Indonesian capital of Jakarta. Apparently the captain wanted a break to rest and handed over the wheel to the co-pilot, but then the co-pilot accidentally fell asleep an hour and a half later. And about 28 minutes later, the captain woke up and he discovered the plane was no longer on the correct flight path. The pilot then told the Jakarta Area Control Center they had experienced a communication problem. The plane was then landed safely with 153 passengers, but the Indonesian Ministry of Transport report showed that the co-pilot had one month old twins and he often had to get out of bed at night to help his wife care for the babies. Obviously the pilots have both been suspended. Not great for sure, but perhaps they just need to give pilots adequate rest. And if that's not enough, seven shots of espresso, pendulum slam on repeat and a bulldog clip on the knackers. Oh, it works every time. A Welsh health board has released the wrong body to a family for the second time in a month. The health board has issued a statement apologising and a Nurem Bevan University Health Board has said human error was to blame in both incidents. 
This particular error happened in November 2023, and shortly afterwards in December, another error exactly the same happened. Applied Cymru Minister for South Wales East said, When news of the first mix-up with a body emerged last December, I hoped it would be an isolated incident. We have now found out that it happened again around the same time, and this is a deeply worrying occurrence, which will do little to reassure public confidence in the competence of the hospital's morgue. He further said, I appreciate procedures have been tightened up since, but there needs to be a reassessment of the process at the mortuary, because clearly there were serious and significant errors in the way things were run. This cannot happen again! I thought the dead had toe tags, or is that just from films? Not a good look though if you realise something's amiss, when you're burying your six stone granny, and you realise it takes eight people and a modified hearse to get her into the venue. Olive oil is the most stolen item in Spanish supermarkets. According to New.nl, olive oil has become increasingly scarce due to extreme weather. As a result, the olive harvest is increasingly lower, resulting in higher prices. The price of olive oil has almost tripled in the last year, to around 14 euros per litre. This has put olive oil on the radar of criminal gangs. While thieves in supermarkets used to make off with razor blades, alcohol and exclusive ham, olive oil is now the most stolen product in 8 of the 17 Spanish regions. Not only that, in December, 11 people were arrested, with the group planning to sell 5,000 litres of olive oil as the more expensive extra virgin olive oil. Bit frightening then to think that my extra virgin olive oil isn't quite what it seems. I, like most people I think, want my olive oil to have not been rammed. Two women in the US drove their deceased 80-year-old husband to the bank to withdraw money. According to RTL News, police in the US state of Ohio have arrested two women who drove to the bank with the body of a deceased 80-year-old man to withdraw money. They then left the body at the emergency room. The women, aged 63 and 55, are suspected of abuse of a corpse and theft from a vulnerable person. Police were called by the hospital where the suspects had taken the body of the man. Douglas Lehman, and moments earlier they had driven him to the bank to withdraw money from his account, and they had placed the body in the car so that bank employees could see that he was with them. The women apparently lived in Lehman's house, and they often withdrew money from his account. The bank had always agreed that, as long as the man was along. The police said they probably wanted to pay some bills, but the women haven't given a real explanation. But before the trip to the bank, the women allegedly found Lehman dead in his home, and a few hours after leaving him at the hospital. They called to give his name and other information. What would have happened if the look out of the window thing didn't work? Were they just going to puppet him all the way to the cash desk and then ventriloquist the cash out? A legal row may force mysterious artist Banksy to reveal his identity. According to The Guardian, two art collectors are taking legal action after the artist's company Pest Control has apparently refused to confirm the authenticity of Monkey Queen, three years after trying to get an answer. Nikki Katz and Ray House have lost patience with Pest Control and are suing it for breach of contract. They point to the Pest Control's website, which states it will issue a certificate of authenticity for paintings, prints, sculptures, and other attempts at creativity. Banksy's real identity has been a mystery for decades. In 2008, the Daily Mail unmasked him as Robin Gunningham, but in a 2003 interview with a BBC reporter, the recording of Banksy himself has emerged, where Banksy is asked, Is your name Robert Banks? To which he replies, it's Robbie. Cats and House say they have tried to obtain a verdict from Pest Control either way on whether their painting Monkey Queen is one of Banksy's genuine prints from a limited edition of 150. They say about Pest Control, they claim to be the official validators of the artist's work. They're just sitting on the fence. They won't say if it's right or wrong. We've had our tails pulled for a whole three years. They further said, we're suing them for breach of contract. They've had three years to do what I paid them 50 quid to do, which by any standard is plenty of time to deal with the situation. The alleged name of Banksy, Robert Banks, is the perfect name for a bank robber and not a painter. I once knew a lad called Matt Gloss, and if he's now not a painter and decorator, he's not fulfilled his parents' cruel calling. McDonald's has been hit by a global computer outage. According to an article by New.nl, McDonald's was hit by a global computer outage on Friday morning. Self-service kiosks and the cash registers were not working. A McDonald's spokesperson said it wasn't clear how many branches were affected but the Netherlands has more than 260 branches of the fast food chain. Their spokesperson said, Fortunately, we're receiving the first signals that the system malfunction is gradually resolving, and this allows more and more branches to open their doors. The cause of the malfunction is unknown, and IT nerds are investigating. But McDonald's have said, There are no signals that this was caused by a cyber attack. I bet that lad that's eaten 34,000 Big Macs was livid. An entire day without Big Macs. It's almost caused to hang yourself. 
A Chinese airline has warned passengers not to throw coins into their engines after an Airbus was delayed by four hours. According to Business Insider, China Southern Airlines posted a five-minute video on Weibo explaining how actions like throwing coins at the plane can delay flights and threaten safety. In the video, a flight attendant tells confused passengers that a passenger had thrown three to five coins into an engine. China Southern Airlines further said, if passengers pose a threat to aviation and safety, they will also face varying degrees of penalties. Is this a cultural thing? I don't really understand. I mean, yeah, throwing coins into a wishing well or under a nice bridge, fine, but in an engine? The Chinese people just open the oil cap and launch a few yuan in there. A pet DNA testing company is in bother after they identified human DNA as canine. According to The Guardian, DNA My Dog received a human genetic sample and identified it as Malamute, Sharpe, and Labrador. Apparently, the company has twice sent back dog breed results from human DNA samples. And after a WBZ news reporter sent a sample from her own cheek, reporter Christian Harger is said to be 40% Alaskan Malamute, 35% Sharpe, and 25% Labrador. And another New Hampshire pet owner, Michelle Leninger, came back to be 40% Border Collie, 32% Cane Corso, and 28% Bulldog. Lisa Moses, Harvard School medical veterinarian and bioethicist, said, I think this is a red flag for sure. A company should know that if they've analysed a dog's DNA, that it's not a dog. Moses went on to say, there isn't necessarily a gold standard answer for what your dog is. A breed is something that we've decided, which is based upon essentially the way a dog looks. This doesn't necessarily mean that we're all going to know what their genes look like. Dog genealogy then, sounds too good to be true, and it probably is. Imagine spending all that money to find out it was essentially a guess. That'd be rough. Tapeworms have been found in the brain of a man who ate undercooked bacon. According to The Guardian, parasitic larvae were discovered after unexplained weekly migraines failed to respond to medication. Jesus! The man had denied travelling to high-risk areas for food and lived at home with his wife in a modern home. Upon further questioning, the man revealed he had a preference for lightly cooked, non-crispy bacon, which he ate for most of his life. Following a CT scan of the man, Florida researchers found many fluid-filled sacs inside his brain. And after being admitted to hospital, he was diagnosed with neurocysterosis, a preventable parasitic infection caused by larval systems from the pork tapeworm. The man was prescribed with anti-inflammatory and anti-parasitic medication and was successfully treated. Oh no, what an absolute shock. Bad things happen when you undercook food. It's like it's some sort of natural selection process that we should definitely allow to continue. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe if you do so fancy. Also, if you think there's any news that we might have missed, please get in contact on the email below. See you next time for another jam-packed news you might have missed. Stay gravy.